Hello, my name is Michael Spinali, and I am an Applications Engineer at Radix Technologies. In this video, we are going to take a quick look at the Radix Liberty GT 1410R Real-Time Spectrum Analyzer, or RTSA. The Radix Liberty GT 1410 RTSA is the world's highest performance real-time spectrum analyzer with up to 765 megahertz of real-time bandwidth, up to 62 million FFTs per second, and 100% probability of intercept with full amplitude accuracy on signals as short as 320 nanoseconds. Currently, the RTSA is running on a Radix Liberty GT 1410 reference platform. The Liberty GT 1410 is also available in a benchtop configuration. A pulse with a width of 325 nanoseconds and a period of 3 seconds, centered at 19 gigahertz, is being received by the Liberty GT 1410R. As we can see, the pulse appears in the RTSA displays. The histogram display shows how often amplitudes at a given frequency occur. Amplitudes that occur more frequently will have lighter colors, whereas amplitudes that occur less frequently will have darker colors. The spectrogram or waterfall display shows spectrum traces over time. The real-time spectrum display shows the latest spectral trace and an optional max hold trace, specific spectrogram frame, or a frequency mask. The IQ display shows the in-phase and quadrature time domain representations for a captured waveform. Above the display are important parameters of real-time spectrum analysis. As with other Liberty GT applications, the controls are located on the right-hand side of the screen. The controls are organized into tabs for easy access. Let's now go through some of the control tabs. The frequency tab contains settings that determine the behavior of the spectrum analysis window and subsequently determine parameters such as FFTs per second, FFT size, and FFT overlap percentage. The real-time spectrum tab contains settings for the real-time spectrum display and histogram display. Let's now add a max hold trace to the real-time display. As we can see, the max hold trace appears in the real-time display. The marker tab allows access to a full suite of marker functionality, much like you would find in a traditional spectrum analyzer. Let's now add a marker to the max hold trace. First, we are going to turn the active marker, marker M0, on by pressing the marker enable button. Next, we are going to select the max hold trace, which is T1, as indicated in the legend above the real-time display. Lastly, we will perform a peak search. As we can see, the marker appears in the peak, and its value is shown below the real-time spectrum display. The spectrogram tab contains settings for the spectrogram display. This includes controls for selecting specific spectral frames, how many spectral frames are stored in memory, and the number of frames to display in the spectrogram. The Sweep tab contains the controls for determining how the RTSA will make measurements. For example, if the displays will be continuously refreshed and how often. The Trigger tab contains the controls necessary for customizing the triggering. The RTSA supports free run, time domain, and frequency mass triggering. An important fact to note is that the Radix RTSA triggering operates at the rate of the FFT engine. Let's now load a pre-existing frequency mask to trigger and then capture the pulse being generated. Let's select the frequency mask file and let's turn on the frequency mask. 
As we can see, the frequency mask appears in the real-time spectrum. Once the trigger is armed, whenever the pulse's spectrum enters the colored region, the frequency mask, the waveform will be captured. Let's now arm the trigger. As we can see, a trigger event occurs when the pulse is generated, and the pulse is then captured and shown in the IQ displays. From looking at the IQ displays, we can see that the pulse width is approximately 325 nanoseconds long, which is what we'd expect. That about wraps up this video. For more information, please visit radixtech.com or email us at info at radixtech.com.